Let's launch Visual Studio 2019 and quickly create a simple modern web application using the project template for an ASP.NET MVC application. We'll call it Modern Web App to easily identify it while we switch back and forth between this and the console application we'll be building alongside of it. We already know that a modern ASP.NET web application is just an old-fashioned console application with some pre-configured defaults. We know that because of the program CS file containing the main method, which happens to be the entry point for basically all applications that have the same heritage from C and C++. Those pre-configured settings can be customized in the startup CS file. Using dependency injection, we automatically get configuration settings through iConfiguration. In the configuration services method, you can customize the pre-configured defaults. That's all great and dandy, but how do we apply that to a console application? Let's launch a second instance of Visual Studio 2019 and quickly create a console application using the project template for a command line application. We'll name this project SameWorks to demonstrate that a console application works the same as a web application. You'll notice that we have less files, but what remains the same is the program CS file along with the main method as the entry point. Let's take a sample of code from the modern web application to begin building out our modern console application. We'll create a public static method that returns an iHostBuilder called createHostBuilder. Make sure to pass in any command line arguments so that they too are available within our application. Let's have Visual Studio do some work for us by installing the NuGet package for the iHostBuilder. We'll need to install one more NuGet package for the host called Microsoft Extension Hosting. Now we can begin the work that will do the work for us. Create a variable that will hold the iHost object then create a variable that will hold our worker. We'll do so by using activator utilities to create an instance of our worker. We'll need to bring in the namespace for Microsoft extension dependency injection. We'll also need to create our worker CS file. We'll call a method called run, which needs to be created in the worker CS file. We'll put a simple console message saying, hello world. Let's run it and see if it works. Lo and behold, it works. We're off to a great start. In the next video, we'll take a look at dependency injection within our worker class. I'll see you there.